Okay, what's going on guys? No guys here, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to go over the 4 one taunting that all the pro players in the pro scene are all using. And the reason why it's so effective is it's one of those formations that it defends in a 4-4-2. For example, as you can see, you know, you have your center mid or one of your left center mids become a center mid. You've got one CDM. It's basically like a bank of four, like a 4-4-2 flat. And you can see the system here and you have two strikers on stay four. So it's like a 4-1-2-1-2. But you defend in a 4 4 2, two banks of four. And the benefit is, of course, when you win the ball back, you create a lot of disorganization and confusion. Why? It's because it turns into a 4 1 2 1 2 when you're attacking. So you're basically defending in a 4 4 2. The transition period is in a 4 1 2 1 2. As you can see, the spaces that are left here with Neymar running through. And then, of course, it actually attacks in a traditional 4 1 2 1 2. You can see this by the radar. Before I show you attacks, I'm going to show you on a radar. You can see the setup over there. Oh, you can see the CDM just over there and the two center mids as well. And of course, if you're looking at it from a defensive point of view, you can see over here the 4-4-2. You know, you have, for example, a left mid, right mid, two CDMs. And I suppose you can say the center forward and the striker. Um, but let's go straight into those tactics. I'm, I'm going to go through them now. As I said, this is kind of derived from Michael Fisher. So props to Michael Fisher for obviously um, using these tactics. And um, I think Dallin Mike used it in FIFA 20, if I'm not mistaken. So I've added my own twist to it just to make it a bit more for the casual player and to make it a bit more um, easier for you to use. So let's go through the tactics. Now, the defensive style, um, as I said a couple of years ago, you don't really want to use pressure on every touch or press out position loss with this tactic. You have to remember you're transitioning from a 4-4-2 defending to a 4-1-2-1-2 it's the exact same thing when you lose the ball now when you lose the ball in the attacking phase if you go to the defensive 4-4-2 if you're on press out of possession loss people are going to be out of position especially that left center mid that's meant to be going to that center mid position in the 4-4-2 so you don't want disorganization if you want to be a bit aggressive you can use pressure and every touch but i would strictly recommend for most players to use balance if you're a bit better defensively and your skill level is a bit higher you can use pressionary touch. Now, um, I've changed a lot of things compared to what he did. I've gone with 45 width um, for the defensive phase just because you are defending in a 4 4 2. And I think the way it does come out, it's a bit too aggressive. To be honest, even 40, 40 or 45 is completely fine. Um, you can use either one of those just because you're defending in a 4 4 2. And I think the way it transitions backwards, for some reason, it creates a bit more space because it's not like a traditional 4 4 2. Um, for the depth, you go with 60. Now, I know he used um, 70, I think. Um, but there has been a patch, as we know, that's been changed. And I don't want to be too aggressive because I think, don't forget, a lot of these guys are pro players. And I think sometimes when a strike is too far ahead and a centre mid is too far forward, it creates too much of a space between the midfield and the back four. So I don't really want that space to exist too much. So I don't want the depth to be super high, especially during the transition phase and then when we sit back. So it's still high enough for us to get ready to press the ball up high at the pitch, but it's not that high where we kind of too far forward if that makes sense feel free to reduce it if you think it's too much now the difference i have done is they've used fast ball at play i've used long ball long ball is basically like a conservative getting behind and as you know because there's no um getting behind instructions for right center mids and left center mids you could think of long ball like okay when we get the ball back when we're defending in a 4-4-2 i want it to transition into a 4-1-2 but i want those players to make runs going forward especially with the left mid and right mids i like how they basically they run across and they create like kind of that, that overflow and that confusion. And it's quite good, like you saw that Neymar example, where Neymar ran through the middle. That's created with the long ball system. And in the chance creation, you can use two. You can use direct passing. In fact, you can use all of them, but I wouldn't use possession. I would use either balance, but I'll be honest, balance is a bit boring. You kind of want them to be making runs going forward. That's the idea to use formation to the fullest potential. So you ideally want to use direct passing or forward runs. My preference is forward runs. But if you do like direct passing, you can use direct passing. I would say give it a try. Direct With forward runs, I feel like the entire team goes forward together. Whereas direct passing, I think it's only really good if you've got a strike inside the box and you're recycling the play and it's good to make the pass over there. I mean, I've never been a fan of the positioning of direct passing. That's why I use forward runs. But feel free to try, try one for one half, one for the other half and decide which one you want. Um, for the attacking width, I've seen they put extremely low values around about 30. And I've seen even sometimes people go to 20. Um, we have just gone with a conservative 40 or 45. Um, either one of those is completely fine. Um, don't forget, you're going to be attacking in a 4-1-2-1-2 narrow anyway. Um, but it's more it's because of the transition period. I don't really want too much of a difference between my defensive width and my attacking width. It used to be a thing in the last couple of years. I don't know if it's too much of a thing this year. I haven't had too much testing on that, to be honest. Um, on that matter in particular um but i like to keep the width somewhat i don't like for example to use 20 width and then for example 100 width because 
Um, obviously, there's such a big difference uh, between the widths. The transition is what the way, where it becomes problematic. So if you have a very high width and you come to a very narrow width, it creates a lot of spaces in between. And that is why you don't want a big thing. And before it was between 1 and 10, but now it's between 1 and 100. So the parameters could adjust differently. But I'd say always keep these in check. Don't really drift above 30. That's kind of the maximum I would go. The players in the box, um, we have gone with 7. Uh, we just kept it default as Michael Fisher did. I think that's his name. I think he's a pro player. I don't know his YouTube channel. If anyone else does know his YouTube channel, let me know. I'll actually link it down below uh, for you. Um, but he used seven, and I think seven is actually a good amount. Uh, so I just use seven as well. Um, corners and free kicks, I still lead them on one, but of course you can change them now because they've actually patched the corners. But in theory, the corner glitch still exists. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. You can still, in theory, do it. So that's why I've left it in, in on one. Now, this is where things get a bit confusing, okay? What we have is, I like I did a couple of years ago, I left it on stay central, one stay forward, one come back in the fence. Um, the idea behind this is now, I'm going to try to draw this out for you so you can understand this. And I also try to show you at the same time. So if I show you, for example, over here, let me show you this over here. I think this would be a good example, okay? So let's see, hopefully you could see it over there. One second. So uh, what I want to do is, is I want to create a system where you create a 414, what, a 4411 or 42311. Sorry, 4231 or 4411. So the way, the way I do it is, is I have one striker there, the center forward there, and the bank of four like that. That is how I want the system to defend. So that is why one player is on comeback and defense. This player on comeback and defense doesn't become like a, a midfield five. People always wonder why when you put the striker on comeback and defense did not become the midfield five is because they nerfed that in FIFA 20. That's why they kept the two strikers on stay four. But if you put comeback and defense one, the strikers, he just sits behind the other one. So that is the reason behind that. So we have the most attacking player or the player that you want to have on stay forward or you can put one on comeback and defense. Now, just for this example, I put Rashford there. But if it was me, I'd be putting, for example, Ronaldo there, stay central, stay forward, and the other one on comeback and defense. I left them both on stay central, and I left them both on balance, right? Because we have forward runs anyway, and we have long ball. We don't need really to put any more instructions on them. They go, they throw, they flow pretty well naturally. Now, uh, this is the most important thing um, for the center mids. This is the most important thing. This, you can use either your left centimeter or right centimeter, okay? So it doesn't matter where you position them. You want to be putting them both. I know he hasn't done it, but you put them both on cover center. Um, put them. So let's say, for example, I want Onyeka. So Onyeka, when I'm attacking, is going to be my CDM. Cut passing lane, stay back while attacking, cover center. Okay? That will be when I'm attacking. When I'm defending, he's also one of the two in the 4-4-2 in the midfield, okay? So that means someone else has to be alongside him. So we have put Lorente here because he's center mid. So we put him on stay back while attacking, cover center, and stay on the edge of the box. So the idea is when you're defending in a bank of four, these guys will be together like that. You see that? So they'll be together. And then Neymar and some of the left mid and right mid. Um, while it's dropping in now, what I'll do is I'll, I'll upload a video on my FIFA school series. If you do want to get better FIFA, you come, you can come join my FIFA school series, patreon.com forward slash no guides. Those videos. But what I'll do is um, I'll put a video on here, the attack patterns for how to use this formation on my Patreon. So of course, got other videos there if you do want to get better. Patreon.com forward slash nil guides. If you don't get better after one month, I'll refund your money. That is a nil guides guarantee. And we'll be finishing off the division 10 to elite division series. But um, I'll show you how that works on that. But yes, so you, these guys are basically going to be staying back. These are the guys that are staying back. So these two are going to be playing like a two centimeters in a 4-4-2. Now, you need someone to play the left mid and someone to play the right mid. Now, typically what happens is, is that um, now in his instructions, I would say ideally, because you can't put comeback and offense. This is something people always get confused with. You can't put comeback and offense um, on these players, unfortunately. So you're stuck with leaving them on balance. So ideally, someone who's got a high, high attacking work rates should ideally be here. So that's why I put Sun there. So that is my personal preference. So Sun will be the person playing the left mid role when we are defending, okay? That will be Sun. So we left him on balance. You can't put him on um, stay back while attacking. You have to put him on balance, okay? And that means Neymar is going to be the right mid. So when you're defending, Neymar would be the right mid. So if I'm, I'm going to put this in yellow, just to make it a bit easier for you. Neymar is going to be the right mid. And then in blue over here, we've got the two center mids. Do you see that? So when we're attacking, it's a 4-1-2-1-2 naturally. But when we're defending, Agneca and Lorente 
and Yak is there, Lorente is there, Sun's over there, and Neymar is over there. And that is how you defend in the 4-4-2 system. I have left Neymar and come back in the fence, get into the box for a cross and conservative. A, because Neymar's stamina is a bit low, and I just put him on to get into the box. And the left mid, I put him on um, get into the box as well to create those darting runs if I do get the counter attack and left him on cover wing. So what we did is we put the player that's on the wing on cover wing and make sure both of these players are on cover center. It's very, very important because you want these guys to, of course, stay in the middle. Does that make sense? Um, what I would suggest is, I know he didn't use cut passing lanes, but I would strongly urge you to use cut passing lanes for most people using their CDMs. And then we have stay back, conservative, and overlap for both the left back and the right back. So that is basically um, the instructions. I'm just going to quickly show you if I can find this clip in the background while it does play. I'm going to try to find you another clip where I can show you how it does work because I think it would actually be very, very beneficial for you to see this. Um, so we've done this basically in a test game. And I kind of got these... Uh, I kind of got these for you. So as you can see over here, look, just have a look over here. This is what my kickoff starts, okay? So I'm going to show you this over here. This is from a kickoff stance, okay? So this is from kickoff. So as you can see, when, when we have the ball... One second. It's from, it's from a kickoff stance. Apologies. Well, I just load this up in the background. Okay. So this is from a kickoff stance. So what I want to do is I want to show you. So if you've already watched this video, it's fine. If you want to stay, I'll explain this in detail. Okay. So as you can see, this is when you're defending in a 4-4-2, right? So we kicked off first, we have positioned the ball. So when we have positioned the ball, the team will be making a run into a 4-1-2-1-2 system. And you can see that slightly, slowly starts to develop in a 4-1-2-1-2 system. When you lose the ball, there's a transition period. So where you can see we're very, very narrow, we then end up becoming into a 4-4-2 system. So you can see if you win the ball back, for example, like how I'm, or the ball moving from left to right, left to right, the players are going to be out of position. So you have to bear that in mind. Do you see? And a lot of players that are watching this video, I know most of you guys are like around about um, the lower the lower ranks or maybe you're on the higher ranks, but you're not at that top tier elite division or pro level. So the problem is that if the ball keeps bouncing from defense to attack, from defense to attack, there's a lot of disorganization and players could be everywhere. Now, that could be a benefit because players being everywhere means more passing options. People are destroying that actually makes it easier for you to tell you. It's kind of how I got away with this situation over here. But then it does make it harder for yourself as well. So what I'm trying to say is you'll only defend in the 4-4-2 bank if your opponent has the ball for like a couple of seconds or so. And you wait for Neymar to go right mid, Sun to go left mid. And then your two center mids to be in the middle. Does that make sense? So it does take time. It won't happen immediately. Don't, don't think that it's going to quickly, they're going, they're going to straight away burst into that system. You can see, for example, a similar thing over here. Watch when I get the ball again from kickoff. You can see here I do a 1-2. You see when I'm attacking, it turns into a 4-1-2-1-2. One, two, one, two. In fact, you can see on Yeka, and you can see my um, my right center mid Lorente just over there. Do you see that? So you can see that's the CDM. I'm doing the 1-2s. And you can see there, that's my um, right, center, right center mid. And ended up scoring the goal. And if you look, for example, from a defensive phase, if I go back to this clip over here, you can see, watch. When we're running back into defensive phase, the team goes into the 4-4-1-1 four, four, one, one flat, as I mentioned in the defensive phase now and as you can see when i win the ball back they're going to transition into a 4-1-2-1-2 you see that but because i lose the ball again they're about to transition but because i lose the ball then i have to go back to the 4-4-2 system so do you understand what i'm trying to say it's not instant so if the ball is bouncing up and down up and down there is going to be a problem like see like here i lose the ball delivery to give an example you can see the center forward and a play on stay forward then you go back to the 4-4-2 system you can see i'm defending then I, I here i use for example sun to get the ball back i use a cut fast lanes i'm defending in a 4-4-2 i use a left back and that is why i reduce the width a little bit then i get the ball back with the Yeka. then when i get the ball back with sun it goes back into a 4-1-2-1-2 so that is how the transition of the formation works so that's why i just wanted to say to just be careful or at least do better than mine i'll take that with a grain of salt um, so ideally, I would say try to get left mid as high, high, um, high, 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 medium is fine, but high, low is a bit where it becomes a bit problematic. Um, but with the cam or come back in the fence, you almost force him to come back. Does that make sense? And that is how, of course, you can line it up. Um, and like I said um, you can use any players. What I would recommend is just having two center mids in your team have like a diversified, um, like. Lorente, someone who's a box to box and on Yeka. And you so you kind of want at least one pure CDM. So that way you can have one pure CDM 
and then when you're defending and then the box to box that kind of acts as a right center mid when you're attacking but when you're defending it acts as center mid and that is how you defend in a 4-4-2 and also you're attacking a 4-1-2 and don't forget Sun goes there and Neymar of course goes there but anyway guys that is um, my version I would say of the Michael Fisher's 4-4-2 formation I hope you guys enjoyed the video thanks for watching take it easy don't forget about Patreon series patreon.com forward slash no guys link is down below in the description you don't get better after one month I'll refund your minors and no guys guarantee thanks for watching take it easy of course I'll catch you next time peace out